So I would say it's probably been about four months or so since I've been on here talking about football. That's too long. What's happening, everybody? Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, fueled, as always, by Nerd Tees, and welcome to week one of my weekly CFL pick show for the 2018 CFL season, and ah, good football. Good football is finally back. I can hear you typing your little comments already. Get up out of here. The CFL is a lot of fun. It's a great league. So, of course, since it's the CFL and there's only nine teams until Halifax gets their 10th team, and I absolutely cannot wait for that, you only got to have about four to five games every week. There are some weeks where, unfortunately, a team's got to play twice. It doesn't happen very often. I think it's only like once or twice through the season. But usually we'll have a slate of four games. We're going to talk about all four games. We're going to talk a little more in depth about them than we will once the NFL pick show starts up again, because then it'll just kind of be integrated and it'll be at the end of that episode like it has been for the last couple of years. But right now we can focus almost entirely on the CFL every single week. So in week one, we have a slate of games that includes the Edmonton Eskimos traveling to Winnipeg to take on the Blue Bombers. We have the Toronto Argonauts beginning their defense of the Great Cup Championship from 2017 on the road in Saskatchewan to take on the Rough Riders. And yes, there is now only one team in the league that is named Rough Riders. The Hamilton Tiger Cats are hitting the road into Calgary. Calgary won the West Division last year. They represented the West in the Grey Cup. Hamilton is in Calgary to take on the Stampeders. That is Johnny Manziel's first dressed regular season CFL football game, so a lot of eyes will be on that one. And the Montreal Alouettes, my Montreal Alouettes, who were terrible last season, probably the worst team in the league, traveling to BC to take on the Lions. So let's start in Winnipeg with that Edmonton Eskimos Winnipeg Blue Bombers matchup and I'm going to be taking the time in this episode to at least talk a little bit about what the teams did last season since I'm assuming a lot of people that are going to watch this a lot of my audience is American so a lot of people that might watch this have almost no idea about anything about these teams. First of all go to cfl.ca please and familiarize yourself with the teams familiarize yourself with the leagues familiarize yourself with the rules it's important if you're going to be watching this show and again give the cfl a chance i think it's on espn i think it's on maybe espn 2 or something like that in the states you do have access to seeing every single cfl football game in one way or another so you can find all of that out on cfl.ca it's important that you go there familiarize yourself with things but we're going to start in winnipeg that edmonton winnipeg matchup the eskimos coming in they had the best record in the cfl last season but against the east division they were seven and one against teams from the east they're not playing a team from the east this week Edmonton had the most rushing touchdowns in the cfl last season they scored 20 in 20 games it's not a rushing league. It's not It's not a rusher's league. There are running backs, and they do put up decent numbers, but it's not nearly the kind of running league that the NFL is. But they led the league in rush touchdowns with 20 as a team. And they had the best total offense in the CFL last season, 407 yards per game of total offense. Mike Riley, Eskimos quarterback, he is one of the standout players in the league. I believe he won most outstanding player in the CFL last season. He led the CFL in terms of both passing yards and passing touchdowns. The Eskimos did lose one of their big weapons in the offseason, actually, to the NFL. Wide receiver Brandon Zilstra, who I believe is actually now playing with Geo's Minnesota Vikings, or at least he was in camp. Zilstra had the most receiving yards in the CFL last season. That is a huge weapon for the Eskimos to lose on offense. But again, Mike Riley, arguably the best quarterback in the league. On the other side of things, you look at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. They scored the most points in the CFL last season. Actually, they averaged 31 points a game, which again, led the way in the CFL. However, they did that on actually the worst total offense in the entire league. They only averaged 356 yards of offense per game, but they were incredibly opportunistic with that total offense. They also had the worst total defense in the entire CFL. They gave up an average of 397 yards per per game last season not a great defense they did outscore opponents but you know those scores were pretty close both of these teams also finished last season with identical 12 and 6 records so this is actually a pretty even matchup 
Notable as well that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were actually the least penalized team in the CFL last season, so they don't give you free yardage. They're a very disciplined football team. Blue Bombers running back Andrew Harris is arguably one of the most, if not the most, dynamic players in the CFL. He really is that jack-of-all-trades running back. Not only did he lead the league in rushing yards last season, he also led the league in catches. So he's that prototypical, like almost a Le'Veon Bell-style scat back that catches a lot of passes and rushes for a pretty good number of yards as well. Also worth noting, Winnipeg has lost their starting quarterback, Matt Nichols. He's one of the better starting quarterbacks in the league, but they've lost him for up to the first six weeks of the season. So it's kind of going to be quarterback by committee for the Blue Bombers in the first little part of the season here. If they can come out of those six weeks, three and three, I think they'll be in pretty good shape. The West Division is incredibly competitive. So Edmonton, Winnipeg, Winnipeg's at home. They're seven point dogs at home. The total in the game is set at exactly 50. I think despite losing Zilstra to the NFL, Edmonton is still one of the premier teams in the league. I have to see how Winnipeg's quarterback situation is going to play out here in this first few weeks. It's such a quarterback-driven league. I, I can't go with a team that their quarterback play is probably going to be questionable for the first little while. So i got to go with the Eskimos here on the road. I'm going to take Edmonton to beat Winnipeg in Winnipeg straight up. I also like Edmonton to cover the seven-point spread in a game that goes over 50 points. Second game on the docket is Toronto heading to Saskatchewan, the Argonauts to take on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Now Toronto, as I mentioned, they're beginning their defense of the 105th Grey Cup, a game that they were playing against heavily favored Calgary. They were trailing by eight points after the third quarter, scored 11 unanswered points in the fourth quarter to take the win 27 to 24 and win the 105th Grey Cup. Toronto was only nine and nine last season, which was actually good enough to lead the East Division because comparatively the East Division is a ton weaker than the West. You had what, one, two, three, four teams in the West that finished above 500, and then you had Toronto at nine and nine, the only team in the East to finish at 500. Toronto last season had the fewest rushing touchdowns as a team in the entire CFL. They only had 10 in 20 games. What was I telling you about? It's not really a runner's league. However, Toronto did have the best total offense in the East Division, 393 yards per game. They also had the best total defense in the East at only 329 allowed per game. On the offensive side of the ball, Ricky Ray, 38 years old. This is probably his last season, although I think we've been saying that now for a couple of years. But Ricky Ray, highest completion percentage in the CFL last season. He had an incredibly good season, leading his team to the Grey Cup. Wide receiver S.J. Green, also a standout for the Argonauts, had the most targets in the pass game in the entire CFL last season. And on the defensive side, Argos have one really great linebacker, Victor Butler, a middle linebacker, I believe, caused the most forced fumbles in the CFL last season. He is a guy that is a ball hawk. He goes for the ball on every single tackle. That's something that you absolutely have to watch out for when you're playing the Argos up the middle. The Rough Riders, to me, are maybe the most interesting team in the league this year. They were the most active team in the offseason in terms of bringing in additional players because, again, they were very, very close to beating Calgary and going to the Grey Cup Championship. They may have beaten Toronto in that game. Who knows? Saskatchewan led the CFL last season in terms of passing touchdowns with 35 in 20 games, and they also had the fewest rush touchdowns in the West Division with only 13. However, what running we do see will likely come from Rough Riders running back Jerome Messam. Now, interestingly enough, Messam played last season in Calgary. So he came from Calgary to Saskatchewan. Messam was a free agent signing, I believe, from Calgary. Jerome Messam had the most carries in the CFL last season. He had the most rushing touchdowns in the CFL last season. Calgary is a team that is more committed to the run game than Saskatchewan is, just in terms of philosophy. But with a talent like Jerome Messam back there, you got to imagine that Saskatchewan's probably going to run the ball a little bit more than they typically would, especially where you now have Zach Kalaros as the quarterback in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, a little bit less proven, I think we can say. Probably going to be on a bit of a short leash will be Caleros, so you may actually see maybe a little bit more of a focus on the run game for Saskatchewan. 
But where I think the Rough Riders are really going to excel this season is on the defensive side of the ball. In the secondary, defensive back Ed Ganey, he had the most interceptions in the entire CFL last season. you got Willie Jefferson on the defensive line who had the most quarterback pressures in the CFL last season. And Charleston Hughes, another player that came over from Calgary. Charleston Hughes had the most quarterback sacks in the CFL last season with, I believe, either 13 or 14. You're talking about two of the best pass rushers in the entire CFL and one of the best defensive backs. He had double-digit interceptions last year. So on defense, this is an incredibly dangerous Rough Riders team. If the offense can get it together sooner rather than later, this is going to be a really dangerous team. Could probably even step to Calgary as the best team in the West. Interestingly enough, Toronto comes into this game on the road as a point and a half favorite. So Saskatchewan, 1.5 point dog at home. The total for the game is set at 52 points. I love Saskatchewan here. I am really, really interested to see what this kind of new look team that's really geared up and loaded for a run here. I'm really interested to see what they're going to do right out of the gate. I'm going to take Saskatchewan at home to beat Toronto. Uh, Obviously, I like Saskatchewan plus a point and a half on the line since I like them to win the game straight up. And I think the game stays under 52 points. Third game on the docket, we have the Hamilton Tiger Cats hitting the road to go into Calgary to play the aforementioned Stampeders. Inarguably, at this point right now, the best team in the CFL. But like I just said, I think Saskatchewan has a great chance to step to them this season. Hamilton, for their credit, to their credit, did lead the East Division in rushing touchdowns last season. They had 17. Also, kind of like we talked about when we talked about Saskatchewan having Ed Ganey in their secondary, in Hamilton's secondary, they do boast Richard Leonard. He had the most defended passes in the CFL last season. He's an excellent defensive back. He will be leaned on heavily. But let's be perfectly honest, what everyone is going to be watching in the Hamilton, in any Hamilton game this season, I should say, is whether or not Johnny Manziel finds his way into the game. I find it hard to believe that Manziel signed in the CFL to be a backup quarterback. However, the coaching staff in Hamilton has come out and said we do not have specific packages for Johnny Manziel, which reads to me he's the backup quarterback. Jeremiah Masoli, who is the incumbent starter, I believe, in. Uh, in Hamilton from last season. Yeah, he took over in Hamilton last season, went like six and four down the stretch. So he had a pretty good end of the season. He's the incumbent starting quarterback until further notice. If he struggles, you're going to see Johnny Manziel in the CFL taking regular season snaps sooner rather than later. Calgary, again, I've pumped their tires as recently as about a minute ago, saying that right now they're still the incumbent best team in the CFL. They had the best record last year. They had the fewest points against, so arguably the best defense in the CFL last year. Now, they did have the fewest passing touchdowns in the West. They only had 24 passing touchdowns in 20 games, but it certainly didn't hold them back from winning football games. They had the best total defense in the CFL, only 315 yards per game against, and they had the best turnover ratio in the CFL at plus 20 in 20 games. I'm interested in seeing how their defense looks now, no longer having the guys that we mentioned there, uh, Charleston Hughes, and uh, how the offense looks without having Jerome Messam. So it'll be kind of interesting to see. This is the first time Calgary's going to go into a regular season in a long time without having like a franchise starting running back that's kind of a running back by committee, and I'm interested to see how the Stampeders handle that. I think if it were against better competition, I may be more tempted to go with an upset here because I don't really know what I'm going to get out of Calgary with all the changes. I'm going to stick with Calgary at home to beat Hamilton. I'm going to stick with Calgary covering the nine-point spread. From last season, they outscored opponents by an average of 10 points. Hamilton was outscored by an average of five. So I'm going to stick with uh, Calgary minus nine in this one in a game that goes over 53 points. And before we get into the last game of the week, I will take another opportunity to plug Nerd Tees. NerdTees.ca, promo code BWFINEST. You're going to save yourself 15% at checkout. You're going to get free shipping in Canada on any order over 50 bucks. If you're American, you're going to get a great bounce on the conversion rate from the U.S. dollar. It's going to cost you significantly less than what the advertised prices are because all the advertised prices are in Canadian. Today's blend is golden apple spice. 
it smells great. What does it smell like? Warm apple pie. Yeah, that's right. I used an American pie line. What of it? So make sure you check out nerdtease.ca. A bunch of incredible blends on there. You're going to find something that you or your loved ones are absolutely going to love. Nerdtease.ca, promo code BWFINEST. And the last game of the week sees the Montreal Alouettes travel to BC to take on the Lions. Alouettes only 3-15 last season, outscored by an average of 15 points per game. They were head and shoulders the worst team in the CFL. They've got over they've got you know turnover now on coaching staff and question marks obviously up and down the board they're they're definitely what you would call the cfl's version of a rebuilding franchise obviously montreal from last season scored the fewest points in the cfl they gave up the most points in the cfl so worst offense worst defense in terms of scoring they had the fewest passing touchdowns in the cfl last season only 17 in 20 games if you can't pass in this league you cannot win They had the worst total offense in the CFL, only 307 yards per game. They had the worst total defense, 408 yards per game. And they were the most penalized team in the CFL as well. But in saying all that, let me say this. The Vegas Golden Knights. I'm not saying, but I'm kind of saying, but I'm not saying. BC, they had the worst offense and the worst defense in the West Division. So, I mean, well, like they finished at the bottom. They were only 7-11 and 11 in the West. So, look, they weren't exactly a great team. They had the worst offense, worst defense in the West. They also had the worst turnover ratio in the entire CFL at minus 19. And you know what? That starts with the guy that holds the football on every single play. Quarterback Jonathan Jennings, the most interceptions thrown in the CFL last season. Like I said, if you can't pass in this league, you can't win. And if you don't protect the football, you're not going to win very often. But the one trump card that the BC Lions do have is that basically what I would call the J.J. Watt of the CFL, and that's Solomon Elamimian. He had the most tackles in the CFL last season. He is an absolute monster at the linebacker position. You try to go up the middle on BC, you're going to run into probably the best linebacker in Canadian football, and he would be a pretty damn good linebacker in the NFL too, I'm just saying. You know what? If this game was in Montreal, I would totally take Montreal in the upset here because BC, this is, again, the one team that I think Montreal can certainly hang with, and I think this is going to be a relatively close game. I am going to give it to BC, just give them the bump from being at home, but I am going to take Montreal plus 6.5 on the line. BC is a 6.5 point favorite at home. That's way too much for me for a team that hasn't really done anything to prove that they should be a favorite by that amount. Sure, it's less than a touchdown, but it's more than like a field goal. Total in the game is set at 49. I think it stays under. These are two not very good offenses. There you go, folks. Those are the CFL picks for week one. Let's go over them here one more time. I've got the Edmonton Eskimos on the road beating the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in Winnipeg. I like Edmonton to cover minus seven on the line in a game that goes over 50 points. I like the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at home to beat the defending Grey Cup champion Toronto Argonauts. I like Saskatchewan plus a point and a half, obviously, because I like them to win the game straight up in a game that stays under 52 points. I like the Calgary Stampeders at home to beat the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and I like Calgary to cover the minus nine on the spread in a game that goes over 53. And I like the BC Lions at home to beat the Montreal Alouettes straight up. But I do like Montreal to cover plus six and a half on the line in a game that stays under 49 points. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for me. Justin Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube. Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter. Fueled, as always, by Nerd Tees. That's going to do it for week one of the CFL Pick Show. We're back to football. It feels great. Canadian football. There's nothing quite like it. Make sure you check it out. Whether you're in Canada or you're in America, try the CFL. You might fall in love with it. Enjoy the games.